Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. Today, we're going to show you how to use the Mac Photos app to edit photos to make them more like a movie kind of feeling. Um, by all means, this is not a turning your digital photos into like a film photo kind of tutorial because they don't look like film photos. I just edit them like this way because I always color grade my videos to make them more like a movie kind of scenes. So that's why I have this idea of doing this tutorial with the free photos app on your Mac computer. So basically the app that you use to view your photos. You can just copy all the settings and you don't have to pay for anything. I'm not trying to sell you a preset. And also I don't even know how to export the preset on your Mac with the photos app and share with you guys. So just copy everything, copy the numbers, copy the curves and everything and everything is free. So just follow me. So I'm going to show you some photos that I have taken using the Canon 6D Mark One DSLR camera. It's an older camera with a really nice sensor and the 50 millimeter F1.8 Canon STM lens, super cheap lens, not an expensive camera. The whole setup is around like $600. And I think you can get great result with this setup and also just a free app on your Mac computer. So let's get started. The first photo that I'm going to show you is this one right here. This is a photo that I took in downtown Vancouver, basically on a cloudy day. I highly recommend you guys to take photos on a cloudy day because the entire sky is like a giant softbox, if you know what I mean. If you have taken photos on a cloudy day, if it's super bright, sunny outside, high noon, it might be more challenging for your camera. Depends on the dynamic range of your camera. The 60 Mark one doesn't have that super high dynamic range that you can take photos on high noon day. So it's going to be a little bit tougher. Let me adjust the screen so you can see the entire editing process. Here, I'm going to click on to the edit button at the top right corner on the Mac Photos app. And you can see all the adjustment on the right hand side. That's basically the adjustment panel. Um, with the Photos app, two or a couple of main drawbacks compared to a professional paid or subscribed uh, Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One is you don't have the ability to create layers. So basically you can just adjust everything in one go. So you can't do like one layer for contrast, one layer for saturation, uh, etc. So that's one of the drawbacks. And also you cannot export a preset as I mentioned before. So you can only save the photos on your Mac computer and that's it. But you can create a photo album. I create a photo al album to save all my Mac photos preset. So that way you can still have the photos kind of organized with your presets. We can name them or anything, but it's still good because you can't, you don't have to pay for it. And I think the photos look pretty good. Uh, after using the Photos app to edit the photos. So this is the edit version. This is the raw photo version. As I mentioned before, this photo was taken on the 60 Mark I. Remember to try to take raw photo if you can, so you have more flexibility in post. And also this is a cropped photo. And the aspect ratio is 235 to 100, which is the 235 to 1 aspect ratio where you see a lot of movie has with the top and bottom with black bars. This is just my personal preference of taking landscape photo, like in the landscape orientation. So I don't have too much uh, distractions at the top and the bottom of the, uh, the image. I don't really like the 3 by 2 or 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which is quite big. So I'm going to reset it and you can see that this is the original aspect ratio. It's much taller, but I prefer the other one. Anyway, I'm going to reset this one first because the aspect ratio doesn't really matter. You can just change it according to your liking. On the right hand side, all the adjustments are here. I'm going to turn off everything to show you guys what I did. I'm going to uncheck the things that are checked, basically the adjustments that I did. Oops, there was the delay here as well. And this is the last one. So basically this is the original photo. So if you click onto the square icon on the top left hand side of the app or the screen, you can see that this is the original photo. Nothing has been changed yet. The first thing I usually do, this really depends on the camera that you're using um, and also to your liking because this is about changing the exposure. 
I usually will try to drag down the highlight as much as I can uh, before it starts looking unnatural. For the 60 Mark 1, this one right here, I have highlight dragged all the way to negative 1. And I have shadows lift a little bit. So basically, I'm trying to recover what's in the shadows area. And the reason why I said it depends on your camera and also the scene or the uh, the settings that you are taking the photos with on location, you might have to boost up the shadows or not recover the highlights as much. And I also have the black points set to negative seven to lift the blacks to make it a little bit faded. I know this is probably, it was really popular before, but I still like the look. So a lifted uh, shadow look, it's pretty cool to me. So you can copy the numbers, but as I said, this is not the most important. You should adjust your exposure according to your liking. So if I apply this, you can see that this looks like a really flat photo. The blacks are lifted and there's not much contrast. This is more like a lock profile when you are taking videos with your camera. If you have seen a lock image before, it's really desaturated and there's not much contrast. So you can play around with contrast and saturation after. This is how I create a flat image with exposure. So copy the settings on this side. You can feel free to do that if your image look pretty much the same as what I had before, which is this one right here. And also the camera that I was using was in all the white balance. I always prefer all the white balance because I don't like, especially for taking street photos, I don't really need to have the uh, white balance set. So I can just take the photo in, and it's in raw. So the flexibility is there. But if you're doing a professional photo shoot with like a client, I highly recommend you to set the white balance so it doesn't fluctuate uh, on each photo. The second adjustment that I did is the saturation of the photo. You can see that I have increased the saturation but decreased the vibrance. This is a little bit different from the usual increasing the vibrance but desaturating it to make the mid-tone colors a little bit more like vibrant. Um, if I do the other way, let me try to see if I can reset this. And oops, no, desaturate it and make it vibrant uh, with the vibrance level. It's not as obvious as before and also it's not as even if you know what I mean. So if I reset this to this, this is a little bit more even. I want a flat image. I don't want any mid-tone colors to pop too, too much. So if I have just the saturation set to 0.1 and then vibrant set to zero. This is what the saturation did to the image. This is before, this is after, before, after, not super obvious. And if I have the vibrance set to negative 0.37, this is how it's gonna look. It's still not saturated because I want to use the curve later to increase the saturation. When you use the curve, the usual contrast curve, you will introduce uh, saturation. So this is why I only have it set to a very, very minimal kind of saturation increase with the uh, color tab. Here we have some other settings for black and white. I never use that. Retouch is to remove stuff in your image. White balance is when you need to adjust your white balance, but I don't have to do it because I don't know what kind of white balance you'll be using in your photo. So for the first two layers or the first two adjustments for exposure and also colors, I don't really do much because that's not the most important. That is up to you. And the most important thing here is the curves. Basically, you can see that I have the RGB curve set to a S curve kind of shape and I have the shadows or the darkest part of the image lifted again to create that contrast. And then I have the red curve set to similar kind of S curve, but this one right here, you can see that the mid-tone or the midpoint is a little bit higher for the RGB curve, but then the red curve is set to the center line right here. And I have the red at the closer to the shadows 
to be lower. When you lower the red in the uh, in the image, you are introducing green into the image. So basically, I'm introducing some greens into the shadows. That's how I usually color grade my footage, even if I'm just if I'm making videos. And I think that really adds the uh, the creative look to the image. With the green curve, I don't think I adjusted that much. I only have a really, really minimal kind of lift, lifted greens in the highlight area. So this is just to anchor the shadow point, the second point at the bottom. I have highlights with some greens added into the highlight area. With blue, I did not touch it. So basically, this is how it looks like. I'm going to turn this on and you can see. This is pretty much done, but then I'll show you the next adjustment that I do to make it even better. Depends on the camera though. So this is the RGB curve. Again, a regular S curve with lifted shadows and also a lifted midpoint by a little bit. And then reds, I set an anchor to fix the midpoint to the center line. And then I lower the reds in the shadows to introduce the greens into the darkest part of the image, as you can see right here. And then greens, I have greens introduced to the brightest part of the image. You can kind of see it right here in the sky area, the brightest part of the image. I have some greens added, blues, nothing. So this is the curves. This is before the curves. This is after the curves. As you can see, saturations was added a lot by curve. So definitely try to use the curve first in order to add in the saturation before you play with the saturation and vibrance tab or the, uh, the levels. The next one, this one right here, is basically to play with individual color to adjust them to your liking. So let's say if you want your yellows to look a little bit more orange, you can do that here. This is the selective color tab and also some other photos editing software they are called HSL, hue saturation luminance. You can change the hue, which is the color of that specific color. And then saturation is the saturation of that specific color. Luminance is the luminance, the brightness of that specific color. I don't, I never really touch range. I, I don't need it if I, I, for me, photo editing, if you don't need to touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> so when it comes to red, yellow, green, light blue or kind of tealish, blue, purple or magenta, this is the settings. You can copy this, but again, this is based on a Canon 6D Mark I sensor and the 50 millimeter f1.1 lens. If your camera has different color science, this is going to change up according to your liking. But you're more than welcome to just copy these settings and play with your image uh, with these settings and see how it looks like. So I, what I did was I lower the hue of the red to make them more a little bit more magenta. And then I have saturation increased. So you can see that if I do this, the reds are more vibrant. I can't turn off individual levels, so unfortunately, sorry about that. And then I lower the brightness of the reds, but that depends on how bright your image is. And then I have yellows. I have yellows set to negative 9.46. The numbers don't really matter. It depends on your camera's color science. That means yellows are a little bit more orangey. So if you pay attention at this fun thing here for the pedestrian lights, you can see that the yellow turns really orange. And then I have saturation increase, so it pops more. It pops the yellow out of that greenish tone that I have set for shadows. And then I have greens. Greens are pushed positive. That means it's moving towards a little bit more bluish. So if you take a look at this kind of layout, the greens, if you have it set to zero, it's in the center. If you want to push it closer to blue, teal, then you push it to the right. If you want to push the greens to yellow, you push it to the left. That's how easy it is to remember that. So you don't have to remember like, oh, like changing the hue of like blue, which direction you should go. It's really easy, easily laid out here. And I have saturation set to plus, 
23.45, that makes the greens pop a little bit more. And I lower the luminance, that means the greens are going to be darker, but then that also increases the saturation at the same time. So if you take a look at the greens, this is what's uh, going to happen in this image right here. So it really depends if your photo has greens. The next one, it's a blue. This one is closer to the sky kind of blue and also some jeans, I would say. So I shift the light blue to, again, a little bit closer to the teal kind of level, but don't overdo it. So if I show you like what I mean by overdoing it is if you do this, you can see that uh, especially here, this bin right here, it turns into a really weird like aqua kind of level or color if I shift it too much to the left. So don't overdo this. That's why everything is kind of at a really small number. And I lowered the saturation because I personally don't like a lot of blues in my photos. Luminance, I didn't touch it. This is blue, blue. Um, again, this is also applicable to the skies usually. So I have it set to, again, closer to teal. Again, don't push it too much. You can look at the bin again. It changes into like this like weird color. So don't overdo this. I've seen someone doing teal and orange look way too much to make them look weird. And saturation, I don't like blues in my photos most of the time, so I lower it. To, because skin tone is usually in the red, yellow, and orange kind of range. And in order to pop the skin tone off a person or something that is more eye-catching, I lower the other colors, usually. Magenta, I usually lower the saturation of magenta by a little bit just to get rid of that weird purple tone that I don't like in a lot of photos. But don't do it too much because this affects the skin tone as well. If you lower this, a lot of times your lips or the person's lips are going to look really pale. So just lower it by a little bit. Also, if your lenses have chromatic aberration, the purple kind of fringing on the highlight um, contrasty part, you can lower the magenta to get rid of them. But then again, don't do it too, too much. So this is how the selective color or HSL settings for this look. You can copy all the numbers. Again, they're free. I don't mind at all. The next few tabs, you don't really need to use it unless your image is uh, needs to be fixed. So noise reduction, I don't really need it. This image is quite clean, to be honest with you, even if I zoom in. Like, I don't see a, like a lot of noise because it's daytime. Sharpening, I don't add sharpening because I don't like photos to be too sharp anyway. This photo was taken at f2.0, so f2 on the 50 millimeter lens, the Canon lens. So the image is already a little bit sharper than f1.8. So depends on your settings, your um, camera and lens. I don't increase sharpness. I think this is perfectly fine, especially if you are going to share this image on social media. This is way too sharp anyway. Vignette, this is only applicable if your camera lens has heavy vignetting. If I turn this on, you can see that the corners are going to be brighter because the Canon F1.8 50 millimeter STM lens has really heavy vignetting at wider aperture. So that's why I had to increase or, or actually set to negative to make the corners brighter. If you want to introduce vignette, you can increase it to make it a little bit more dramatic. But for this lens, I actually have to decrease the vignette to make the corners brighter again so they don't look like they have like a circular frame. So these are all the settings of my photo. And I think this really makes the color of the image look a little bit more of a movie-like movie scene. Of course, it depends on how you take the photo as well. I always like to have the light. Uh, on a cloudy day shining on the side of the subject to create this like Rembrandt lighting kind of like this key light I have right here right now. And the crop factor again, two, three, five, two, one. This is how I want the image to look like anyway. But that is just a personal taste. After all the adjustment, of course, you can just hit done and then it will be saved on the image. You can, um, put a heart on it to favorite it, and you can add it to your album to save 
the preset kind of. And if you want to apply this fold, uh, this preset to other photos, all you need to do is to right click onto the image and click on copy edit and open up your other, uh, other images. So this is, oh, that was loud. So this is another image that I took with the same camera, same lens on a snowy day in winter. And I really love this image because of how this couple, I think they're a couple, and they look really interesting in the image and the background blur is rendering like really, really well with this lens. Keep in mind, 50 millimeter f1.8 STM lens, really good lens. All you need to do, you don't even have to go to the editing page if you don't need to adjust anything, but if the photo was taken on another day on another like kind of settings, I highly recommend you to go into the edit tab and you can just right click on the image, paste edit. This is where I will show you why I said exposure don't really matter on this kind of preset is because you really need to adjust them according to the image, individual image. So if I paste edit, you see that is gonna turn it into like a weird, like faded green image. What I have to do usually is I will have to increase the shadows of the image to make it brighter. So now it looks normal, but it might get too bright. I don't know why my computer is acting so slow. So I have to use the exposure tab to adjust the exposure according to my liking. And I really like this having negative exposure and then shadows lifted all the way. And uh, I am looking at this traffic light right here. The red light is kind of funky. So I'm going to lower the exposure again to make it not like having the artifact of not showing a red light, if that makes sense. Yeah, just like that, I'll lower it. And then of course I'll add the crop factor of the custom crop factor of two, three, five, two, one. And yeah, I might bring it around here and that's it. That's how it looks. That's how I like this image to be like. And I'll try to do it uh, with another image. This is a vertical or portrait orientation photo here. I just need to tap onto the edit page. And then I just need to right click onto the image, paste edit. And you'll see that the same thing happened. The Because the image was darker than the one that I used the preset with or the original photo with the preset. So I have to lift up the shadows. Like usually they go like quite high and then I can lower the exposure to find the right balance right there. I really like this image. The colors really pop. I don't need to change the crop factor because I don't need that like two, three, five by one vertically. The next one right here, this is not a black and white image. It's just a JPEG that was black and white. So if I tap on the edit page, the raw photo was, uh, was actually colored and I'm just gonna right click, paste edit. I'm going to keep showing you like a couple more samples if you want to stick around. If not, thank you so much for watching and supporting the, the video. I'm going to lift the shadows by a little and lower the exposure maybe like here. I really like this image because it looks like a movie scene to me. I don't know about other people, but I really like it. And I'll change the aspect ratio to to two, three, five, two, one. Yeah. I found that basketball, like walking around Yale town, downtown Vancouver. And this is also an other raw image. You can use black and white on JPEGs and then have the uh, raw saved as color because raw is raw. It doesn't have the, uh, the filter applied. So again, same situation right here. I'll increase the shadow, but not too much because I feel like it's going to clip some of the, uh, the part of the image. Maybe somewhere like here. I just want to make sure that all the colors are not breaking or falling apart based on this adjustment. Of course, highlights, same thing. You can adjust it according to the image. And then I'll apply the crop factor, the custom crop factor. I'll lower it a little bit. So this is uh, the third. Yeah, I really like this image. I love the colors of the hat. The next one, this is uh, this was taken at the Fan Expo Vancouver. And this is the raw image. I'm just going to paste edit. 
it will happen with the same like greenish shadow. So I'm going to lift the shadow. You can see that by lifting the shadows, it really change up the, the tone of the image because I added greens in the shadows. So I'll just, it was a gloomy day, so it will be a little bit more contrasty. So I don't want to make it look super HDR. Yeah, I think that's good. And then I'll change the aspect ratio again. Again, you, it's up to you. You don't have to change your aspect ratio, but I just like it that way. Yep, that's that. And this was taken at Chinatown on Chinese New Year. I'm going to paste the edit. It will probably be the same because this image looks really dark to begin with. So I'm going to lift up the shadows. You can see that everything gets super cool and vibrant already after lifting the shadows. But again, it was a really, really gloomy day. So maybe something like that. And then this is a car photo. This is the last photo that I'm going to show you guys because I don't do car photography, but this preset or this kind of settings will apply really well on cars as well. Everything was taken on the same camera, same lens, same settings. And again, same situation. So I'm going to lift the shadows maybe to this. I want it to be a little bit more contrasty. Yeah, I've never taken car photos before, but I saw this car and the color looks really cool. And it really pops the color of the car with the concrete like floor. And this is before, this is a raw photo. This is the edit version. So I really, really like it. Maybe a little bit brighter on the uh, shadow side. Yeah, and that's it. This is how I edit my photos on the Mac computer with the free photos app to make them more like a movie kind of scene look, not film look, because you cannot add grain onto the image. Even if you can, I don't think digital photos can be edited to look exactly like film. At least I cannot do it. But this is how I like my photos to be done. So if you like this kind of tutorial, let me know um, in the comment section below if you can try to use this preset, copy everything, and apply it apply to your photos and you really like it, let me know in the comment section below as well. Or if I've done anything wrong, let me know so I can improve on my editing skill. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.